Kapuani Kiwanga is one of the uh, most brilliant artists working today. She's someone that is uh, able to uh, reflect and think and articulate uh, very complex ideas and themes in her work. She studied anthropology and that's a sort of methodology that she applies then to the art making. The materials that she uses are constantly informed by the, the place and the time in which she is. It feels very minimal, it feels very distilled, and yet something about imbuing the material with a certain amount of significance, with a certain amount of mythology, with a certain amount of resistance to single interpretation as well, is extremely powerful in her choices. An example that comes to mind is Baker Miller Pink, a color that was created in order to paint the walls of prison incarceration spaces to appease people. But of course, being subjected to this pink color for hours and hours never created peace within the people. You have these blue neons that are used in public washrooms so that people who want to shoot up cannot see their veins. So within this work, you see two different ways where architecture is modeled in order to dictate human behavior. It is abstract in its form, but it is infused and informed by deep research on space and architecture. So for the Highline, Capuani created an amazing new piece, uh, which is titled On Growth. Uh, and there are several references uh, into it. Uh, first of all, it looks like a large scale uh, vitrine that contains a sculpture of a fern. Uh, it's made of glass. And the most obvious reference is to um, the history of Wardian cases. Uh, Wardian cases were portable terrariums that were used mostly uh, in colonial time to uh, bring back to the West uh, plants uh, that were still alive and that were taken mostly from faraway places and that could survive the journey to, let's say, to London, but also uh, could survive eventually the very polluted uh, climate of this uh, new uh, metropolis. She's using decroic glass, which is a very special glass that has been treated with uh, several films inside. And so at first it looks like it's uh, shining with different colors. At times you reflect yourself and at other times you can actually see inside. So she's also playing with ideas of the threshold between visibility and invisibility and also ideas of surveillance kind of questions uh, the viewers and invites the viewers to reflect on our built environment. We can ask ourselves where are these plants coming from and which stories are they telling and so the ability of intertwining the history of botany with a larger history uh, is something that I think runs through Capuani's work quite often. This working with materials, with different materials, and not repeating oneself, that's, that's what I think is really exciting about what she does. She seems much less interested in sort of the archival impulse that agitates so many actually contemporary uh, artists. So it's much less about the sort of object itself for that piece of history and the sort of cult of fetishization of that object, but it's more the many stories that can be told around that. Making the research aspect fundamental, we also start to re-evaluate and reinvestigate what are those research paradigms that are given for granted in the production of knowledge today. And it is only in engaging with the process of research that we can change the way that research relates, for example, to power, and we can tweak those relationships of power and perhaps begin to tell stories not necessarily different stories, but the same story differently.